Are you ready for a change? Are you ready for your life to turn around? Are you ready for things to happen to bring you great success, to see your dreams and visions come to pass? Then you are at the right place at the right time, listening to the Julie Tussie Show podcast. Welcome. And while you're here, please subscribe and leave us a good review. Also, let your friends and family know about the Julie Tussie Show. Get on the Julie Tussie train. We're going somewhere, baby. Pop the glam pain. It's time for the Julie Tussie Show live guest, current events, scathing exposés. The original suburban bombshell, the big blonde baby, giving you the fastest, funniest, most informative 30 minutes of your life. And now, here's Julie Tussie. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Julie Tussie Show. I have none other than the official fitness and health coach for the Julie Tussie Show, Jason Leenarts. Jason, how are you today? Julie, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me back. I, I guess this means that I have not managed to scare your listeners away because you are always <laughs> kind enough to bring me back on. But, you know, maybe sometimes folks need a little bit of time to sort of you know, marinate on what I have to share. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if I was a 100% fitness podcast, which I don't know, maybe maybe my intelligence is lacking in this area because there is no niche, no category for what I do. (laughs) <laughs> four awards, brother. Four awards. So if I was a, com- <laughs> we're talking iHeartRadio awards. Um, if I uh, if I was all fitness, then you would just have to become my partner. We just have to, I, you know, you'd be here so much. We we would we would certainly have a good time. But you know, I'll I'll actually play to your I'll play to your credit though because I think that a lot of what you do on your show, you know, you tackle a lot of the things that that you see other women are going through. And it's not just health and fitness. You know, there's a lot of other there's a lot of other aspects to life that don't involve what you do in a gym and what you do with food. There are. I mean, like, what about yellow neon clothing? This is there's there's travesties <laughs> going on, Jason, and I must write them. I must. <laughs> I, I, I get it, and and I I guess I should say that I'm thankful that I have not offended you with yellow neon clothing uh, up up to this point. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like it, but there's. I'm getting ready to do a spring fashion show and some of the stuff that comes out. I'm just like, oh, my Lord. But, yeah, to make light, but I really do um, feel like I'm on a mission from God to to help women with all kinds of areas. You know, as women, like you said, it's so much more than just the how many calories you eat and how much food you eat and how you there's so much emotion that goes into a woman's life and so much self-esteem that is affected by how we feel or perceive that we look versus what we think society standard is and you know that goes from everything you know that goes everything from how you think to how you raise your kids, to who you are, what you want. It just just goes, you know, it's like a ping pong ball. It just goes everywhere. And so there's so many different directions to go. But one of the reasons I called you, and I just thank you, Jace. I love you so much that I can just read an article or see something you're doing, and I'm like, text, Jason, will you come on the show? And you're so, you know, it's not like, yeah, let my people call you pe- your people, and in six months we'll get on there, you know? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so blessed that you do that. Thank you. But I I saw this morning that you wrote an article. Now, you are quite a writer. So let's give the people um, listening just a little bit. Oh, it would take a long time to tell all that you do. But just kind of let everybody introduce yourself to the listeners. And then I'm going to talk about this article. Yeah. So thank you. I, it um the I uh, Let me give you the, the short and sweet. So I own a a brick and mortar semi-private personal training studio called revolution fitness and therapy we've been in business uh this will be our 11th year in may 
and I also host a podcast called Revolutionary You. It's primarily health and fitness related, uh, so it, it is going to be more conversations about calories and training and mindset and all that other stuff. And then I tend to go a little bit outside of that realm as well because I think there's, like you, I think there's other conversations to be had that involve our health. Um, I've written two books. Uh, one that I wrote a few years ago called The Revolution is You, and then a brand new book that just came out the end of last year called A Revolution a Day. Mm. And I am a husband, and I am a father, and I am I was talking to you about this uh, before we hit record. I am maybe slightly out of my mind because I put so many things on my plate, <laughs> like a certain certain Julie Tussie that I know. So, and, like some and other so, people you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I in the in the midst of that, I, I try to hold myself accountable to a weekly blog. Um, so every typically every Tuesday I release a new article and that was part of what inspired uh, this particular episode. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm glad that you're doing something fantastic with your life, and I appreciate it. Now, I found you by listening to your podcast. I don't know if I ever told you that. And so I reached out to you, and we've been uh, fast friends ever since. Yes. But- but I love the um, I love the fact that in life we have choices and and that we can do with our lives things like I don't know about you, Jason, being kind of the type A personality. I I would guess you are too. Are you a type A per- personality? I that's probably what I most closely resonate with. Yes. <laughs> So being that kind of personality, I like to think that at the end of my life, I have left something that will help the lives of other people. You know, you live life so long and you learn so much or you're in your field and you learn so much like you and you because you're way younger than me and you (laughs) you have so much that you can share if people will uh, listen to it or the right people get a hold of it. It can change their life. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting position to be in, and, and I mean, like you, I'm I'm trying my best to uh, in, influence with as much positivity as I can. But sometimes you have to have some kind of difficult conversations, and you never know who you're going to hit on the right day with hopefully the right words. Because you know, this whole health message it means different things to different people, and so you know, if I if 10 people read my article, um, there might be a couple people that be offended by it because they don't like maybe my delivery. But there might be two people that are like, oh my God, that is exactly what I needed to hear today. And I think now I have a better understanding of why certain things go or don't go my direction with this whole weight loss thing. And so that was something I always try to be as, as sensitive as possible to because ultimately we're all kind of we're all kind of dealing with different things. So when I, when I write, I'm, you know, I, I try to think about, okay, who's going to read this and who is it going to really catch the attention of? And am I, am I speaking to them the way that I, I hope is a helpful way? Well, I, I enjoy your writing. I don't know. I've never told you this, but I was one of those nerdy kids um, that just loved, loved, loved to read. And I have been a very avid reader for many, many years. And I love your style of writing. I love how you you hit it. So when I found this, when I saw this this morning, the article that you wrote for your blog was The Case For and Against the 1,200-Calorie Diet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I love it. Incoming and in four. Um, but, you know... I myself, though, I think the reason that it got me is I'm about 5'4", and my whole life, this number, 1,200 calories, has just been ever before me, just like a, just like a demon looking at me. <laughs> like, why can't I have 1,500 calories? You know what I mean? And, it, and I loved how you talked about it, and you can talk about it now in the article about how you did a little study of the women in what four women fell into the category and i believe i'm one of them or i'm very very close and it's so frustrating but i loved how you presented it so let me so you tell your you tell us the case for and against 1200 calories if you can <laughs> okay yeah and so i i may go a lot of different directions with this so if you feel like you need to interject please you know kind of stop me in my tracks and we'll pick it back up but this is something that to me 
I, I'll be very honest with you. I, I'm normally kind of writing, um, you know, the week. So as I mentioned, I released the blog on Tuesdays and normally around the weekend, like Friday, Saturday is when I start kind of working on the idea for the next article. And I've had a few different ideas I was messing with. And for some reason, I was like, no, this 1200 calorie thing is really starting to bother me. And I think the reason why is because I, and I say this in the blog, I've had some fantastic conversations on my podcast with some amazing coaches, men and women. And it's one of those things that sometimes it comes up in conversation. And I've had some of these, a uh, couple of female coaches that I, I won't, I won't name, um, but they've said on the show, you know, who, who comes up with this number? Like this number is ridiculous. <laughs> and unfortunately, the way that it, that it gets brought up, there is not a lot of context provided for why the, the person had that particular opinion about it. And as a coach, and Julie, you know, you and I have worked together, you know, through this portion of it where we've talked about a caloric plan and a caloric budget and caloric needs and all this other stuff. And so I thought, you know, I want to I want to make a case for this. Like, I actually want to actually have something that makes sense for the people that are reading it, because this is going to be predominantly, a, you know, a female base that reads this, because most guys are never going to see a 1200 calorie diet unless they're just particularly masochistic. Um, the I started to go through all of my files, and so in the beginning of the article, what I one of the things that I say is I I made a count of all the the active clients that I have right now, and as of the writing of the post. I have 94 active clients, and that's between my online clients and my face-to-face -face clients. That's awesome. Thank you. And of that 94, 55 of them, so about 60%, um, are women. And of the 55, 48 of them are with me for weight loss, which means that only seven are here because they're basically, they're happy where they are. They don't need to lose weight. Um, that's a very small percentage of people right. um, that they, they don't need to lose weight or they really don't feel like that's their, their, their main goal right now. So of those 48 women, I took a deeper dive. And I'm like, okay, so when I look at all the files, all the calorie files and the measurements and all that stuff of these 48 women, how many women have I suggested may need to look at a 1,200-calorie diet? And where does that number come from? So when for anyone who's listening let's just say they are on my fitness pal which is if you don't know and if you're new to this whole calorie thing my fitness pal is arguably the most popular food tracking app available right now I love may not it. be the best yeah. one but it's it's the most popular one and when you go in to my fitness pal it's going to ask you certain questions it's going to ask you your age and your gender and your height and your weight and your level of daily activity it's going to ask you all those things because it needs to go through an algorithm to determine roughly how many calories do you need just to exist in this world and to basically keep all systems go. And if you're a woman, I can pretty much promise you that number is not going to be terribly high. Um, the majority of the women that I train right at this moment are somewhere below 200 pounds. I do have several women who are above 200 pounds, but with my current clientele, that's not that's not the majority, and that may change six months from now. But as of right now, that's where it is. And so if you're below 200 pounds, you probably don't have a ton of calories to work with unless you are a highly active individual, meaning you have an active job, you train frequently, you do CrossFit, you can't get out of the boot camps because you love exercise so much. <laughs> that's not an individual who probably needs to be on a 1200 calorie diet. And I, I mentioned that in there. But for the average woman who may be 20 or 30 or 40, who may have kids or who might not, who may have been through three decades of dieting or maybe hasn't, um, that number might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. So here's what I came up with. When I went through those files, uh, and I, I may I may misquote my own work, but somewhere around 11 or 12 was the number of women that I had who were right around that number of 1,200 calories. And then another 11 or 12 were at 1,300. So it's literally a 100-calorie difference between mm. those two. Right. So that's almost half of my, cl my female clientele who are with me for weight loss that to lose weight at even a like not even a mind-numbingly slow pace 
would have to be somewhere between 12 and 1300. So here's where it gets a little bit weird. You said something that I thought was really, really crucial, which is, why can't I have 1500 calories? <laughs> well, in your, in your case, if memory serves, you are somewhere between 15 and 1600, maybe even slightly higher to be able to maintain your body where it is right now. And that's based on your age and your gender and all that stuff I mentioned just a little while ago. Which my age is 30 and some. Right. Let's make that clear. (laughs) (laughs) Now, as you get older, you get less calories. Well, (sighs) right, right, right. So that's that's a really big thing to mention is that as you age, you are typically less metabolically active. You're typically not as efficient at burning the calories that you take in. So the numbers start to change a little bit over time, which is just that unfortunate game that we play with father time. But there was a question that a client asked me some time back, and she said to me, what if I don't want to make a deficit from my caloric intake? What if I just want to eat at maintenance and I'll just train harder? And in theory, that's exactly how it should be. It should be. The problem is, (laughs) yeah, the, the problem is, is that when you go to do exercise, number one, you don't really know. The average person Mm-mm. doesn't know how many calories they burn. And I'll try to explain caloric burn in maybe the easiest way that I know how, which is, Julie, if you were here in Stowe, Ohio with me, and I put you on my treadmill, and I put you on the treadmill at a speed of five, <laughs> and, I told you to, and, I, and I told you to go for right. ten minutes, you would burn, and I'm just going to throw an arbitrary number out. Okay. Let's just say that right now you would burn 100 calories in 10 minutes if I put you at a speed of 5. If you came in here every day and you did the same speed and the same duration, you would burn fewer and fewer calories over the span of days, if not weeks. What's up with so that? that? The same, what's that? What's up with that? <laughs> your, your, body, your, your body simply just adjusts to yeah. the stimulus. So your only choice is to go faster, and higher if there's an incline or longer. And so you're constantly basically chasing this carrot of how do I continue to burn more calories? And that's why I don't like to use cardio as the first plan of action for fat loss. I like to use caloric intake because even though it's not 100% exact, it is a little bit easier to control than how many calories you're burning on your treadmill or at CrossFit or in your boot camp or at Orange Theory, or wherever it is that you're going. Um, The other problem, and this is something I talk a lot about with my clients, and you've been working with me on and off for quite some time, you know this. For the majority of people, when you really start to ramp up your cardio, you also ramp up your hunger. And for what, what tends to happen is we get in this reward cycle of, yes, but I worked out harder, so I can eat more. No, you cannot. No, because you're already behind the ball. So it becomes this really odd game that you play with yourself that you don't break the cycle of. And so when I talk about, um, you know, as I mentioned it in that that article, 1,200 calories for some women would truly be too low. But 1,200 calories for someone else might be just right. What what do you think, Jason, of like these 500 calorie or 800 calorie a day because um, you know the so, doctor says don't go yeah, below what's this what's this yeah. whole thing we're stuck at 1200 but we can't go below 1200 what is that yeah so let me let me try to come at this from a couple different angles um when i see people or hear about people doing less than a thousand calories i start to throw up all of my red flags <laughs> right. um because unless you are much older and let's just throw an age out like at least 65 or 70 years of age and or much shorter like below five feet in height okay that may not be a very good number for you to shoot for now there's a caveat to that you and i both know about intermittent fasting yeah and there are certainly some intermittent fasting protocols where maybe you have a higher day and a lower day Mm -hmm. where you could probably stretch you know a low sub 1,000 one day and then a high over 1,000 the next day to sort of play the same game with yourself. Mm -hmm. But in terms of just chronic dieting, hey, let me just see how long I can go at 500 calories. 
I would say, I hope to God you're under doctor's supervision. Yeah. Um, it just, it's one of those things, like, if it doesn't sound healthy, it probably isn't. Right. And so I want to come back to what you'd said before about, but I want 1,500 calories. Right. Well, try something. And this is for any woman who is listening right now. You pull any number out of thin air, any number, any number that you think you can live with, and try it. Try it for two weeks and see what happens. So let's just, let's say it's 1,500. So Julie, what I'd like you to do, we're going to just kind of draw this, this hypothetical situation out. I want you just to eat 1,500 calories for the next two weeks, and I want you to tell me what happens. Did you lose weight? Did you maintain? Or did you gain? Right. And then reassess. So let's just say that I told you or suggested, hey, Julia, I think you should, you know, maybe try a 1,200 calorie diet to lose weight. And for whatever reason, whether it's a it's a mental hang up or you're having a bad week or whatever, you go, you know what? No, I'm just not going to. I'm going to do what I want to do, which is kind of what people do anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, typical and so human. I, yeah, typical <laughs> human that, you know, hey, we're all we're all big kids. We're all totally in charge of our choices. Exactly. Um, I, I would set you at the 1500 or tell you to set yourself at 1500. Do the very best that you can to make sure that you hit it. And then after two weeks, go, okay, what happened? And if you're not losing, dial it down by 100 calories. Right. See what happens at 14. Because where it gets kind of sticky with 1,200 or 1,300, because, you know, every person is different, is there are a lot of people, I'll, I'll, I'll be specific and say women, there are a lot of women who say, but I'm eating 1,200 calories and I'm not losing weight. The first thing that you want to check and see is, is it truly 1,200 calories? Right, right. Or are you doing 1,200 calories Monday through Friday, and then Saturday it's your oh crap moment? And I, I try to keep it a little bit PG on your show. <laughs> I, I'm a little bit more loose lipped off the You're Julie a potty mouth. show. But I am a potty mouth, 100%. I, I, I wear wish. that hat. Yeah. So what, what I would say is when you have that oh crap moment on Saturday where you had, say, oops, a 2,500 calorie day, Guess what? Honey, you just lost all your progress for the week. See, that's me, oh. Jason. That's me too, and T. So here's where I'll kind of play back in your favor of the 1,500 calories. So let's say again that our conversation hypothetically is Julie's maintenance is 1,500, but to get her to lose weight, she needs to be at 12. Um, 1200 i should say please don't eat 12 calories um <laughs> or 12 donuts or whatever yeah or 12 donuts yeah. if you find that you just come die uh, you you become unglued by saturday see what happens at a slightly higher level see if when you increase it and this is something that actually heather robertson our mutual friend heather robertson has talked about is what happens when you eat at quote unquote maintenance? Right. Because when you're taking a client, like let's just say, let's say a woman walked right through my doors today and she said, you know what? My weight's out of control. I, I, I need to do something about my weight. And we'll keep working with the same example of 1500 at maintenance and 1200 to lose weight. If she came in, there's a good chance that maybe she's been eating closer to 17 or 1800 calories. Mm -hmm. She could theoretically lose weight at 1500 because she's starting to get the eating back in a reasonable place for right. where her body is right now and the reason why i say 1200 so that people don't think i'm just pulling it out of my skinny butt is i'll take the maintenance number and i'll pick a deficit amount somewhere between 15 and 20 percent so if 20 percent if 1200 is too uh Four. aggressive yeah then, then do less. You know, uh, right. start at thirteen or start at fourteen, and just see what happens. Um, and you know, that's it's probably one of the best things that you can do. The other problem, though, is that you know we start to get in this comparison game, and I'm part of a, a fairly large group. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and name check them. I'm, I'm uh, a member in a group called Macros Incorporated, and I just recently had the CEO from the company. Uh, on my show, a super nice guy named Jay Woyth. Well, Macros Inc. has a website where you can do like a macros calculator. And it does essentially the same thing. It's it's an algorithm to be able to, to come up with your calories um, based on your goals. And this is where carbs and fat and protein are at. And I see a lot of women who look pretty fit 
who are like, yeah, this is the body that I got on 1,800 calories. And I'm looking at these people and I'm like, wow, I know. what do you do? What in, what in God's name do you do? And then you sort of have to look at this big picture. Okay, well, what does this person do for a job? What does this person do for training? How does this person train? Um, there's just so many variables that you have to, oh, by the way, they're 21 years old. They're not 57. That, that kind of matters. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Right. And, and so, and people don't always think about that. So when you're following folks on Instagram that just have no business being health influencers, right? Um, this is where I think you can kind of get into a lot of trouble. So the reason I bring that up is because, Julie, let's say that your next door neighbor is the same age as you and roughly the same weight as you. She may require different calories than you just because that's the card she was dealt. Oh, yeah. So if it takes you 1,200 calories to lose weight, maybe it takes her 14 or maybe it takes her 1,000. Yeah. You just don't know. Right. And so that's where we sort of have to just look at this and go, yeah, but my th- the cards I've been dealt are the cards I've been dealt. We're not playing Uno. We're not playing Go Fish. This is this is what I've got to work with. Um, so, you know, the one thing that I want to try to express is whatever it takes that individual to lose weight, it's just what works for them. And try right. not to get in too much shaming or any of that stuff about, oh, let me let me gloat a little bit because I know you're really suffering at 1,200 calories, but I get to look great at 1,500. Well, screw you, Susie. <laughs> I know. I know <laughs> women that can have 2,000. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Right, right, How right. can you do that? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's one of those things where you want to believe that people are telling the truth. But I'll, I'll kind of offer this up from an interesting perspective, too, that's not related to weight loss. You know, I so I, I coach people for a living. This is what I do. It's how I support my family. I've got this brick-and-mortar business, and I'm constantly being inundated with advertisements for from business coaches, people who want to help me take my business to the next level. Right. And too. I look at some of these people, and I'm like, wow, you are not even living in reality. Um, and you can tell anybody whatever you want. You can tell people, uh, I make seven, seven figures a month, but we don't know. We have no idea. Right. You could just literally be coming up with numbers and pulling them out of thin air just so that you can start to build up a clientele. And I think that's where there's a certain danger of people just throwing their calories out because we don't know what's true. And it starts right. to distort a, a reality that we don't know how to come to grips with. And don't we, Jason, always come to this point? On the Julie Tussie show, you have to find <laughs> out what works for you. You, you, you know what do. I mean? You, and it, you do. And it's hard. I can say, honestly, as a woman who likes her nachos and chocolate, and you know, I mean, that's my Achilles heel, but I don't look at that as a bad thing because it could be worse. It could be a gallon of vodka. <laughs> You know what I mean? It could be, it could be a whole entire coconut cake. It could be things like that that I have to try to fit into my life. So this little thing that I fit in that I can usually do for three hundred calories or less, I, um, I, I resent. I have to get over resenting that it takes that little for me to lose weight because there are things that I want in life and that I need in my life to enjoy. And food is so much more than nutrition and fuel. It is society. It is emotion. It is celebration. It is family, especially when you're raised in a big Italian family like me. To feed you is to love you. And so all these things come in, you know, and so I have... I right now I'm working through this again. You'd think you would slay the dragon and it would be dead, but I'm still having to deal with resentment. And maybe it's because I like to be in control and usually I can control just about anything, but I cannot seem to control this. You know, it's you bring up a lot of really great points and I I do want to highlight this too because uh the article that I released last week uh, was an article called Thoughts on Couples Weight Loss. And it was inspired by a couple that I currently train. And the, the husband started with me first. The wife started with me several months later. And they both have been trying to lose weight. And they started, when, when he started with me, they had been on a, on a variation of Weight Watchers, which you and I have discussed mm-hmm. uh, many times on this show. Yeah. And they were, they were seeing some progress. And then they, they hit a wall. And so... Uh, You know, he came in, he did his consultation, we get everything going, he loses a little bit of weight, and then he hits the wall, 
and then she gets started and she she doesn't really embrace it like she doesn't totally embrace the whole calorie thing but of course she started right before the holidays so it's not always the best time to do it right (laughs) they came back to me after the holidays and they said okay the holidays are done we need to get this weight loss thing happening now the great thing about this was i got to sit down with both of them to explain the difference between what it takes for him to lose weight versus what it takes for her to lose weight and this is where we're going to kind of come back full circle to this whole like number conversation yeah for him his maintenance 2500 calories if we work with that 20 percent deficit he gets to eat 2000 calories a day to lose weight by comparison her maintenance 1500 her deficit 1200 oh, that's killer <laughs> and so when you think about this in terms of meals so let's let's break it down oh. into three meals just to try to make the math a little bit simple if she were going to eat three evenly sized meals throughout the day we're talking three 400 calorie meals that's just to make the math simple yes but by comparison he gets to eat three almost 700 calorie meals he gets to eat almost double what she does and he'll still lose weight right and he'll (laughs) and he'll lose it this is the hell of it he will lose it at a faster rate Uh. than she does because his relative deficit is more than hers so this is where i think that when we're when we're talking about you know it would be one thing if julie tussie was a single woman trying to do it on her own but she's not she is a mother she is a wife she is a super busy individual with emotions and stresses and 50,000 things going on. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, I don't know you at all. And no. so if, you know, if, if Gary Tussie decided he wanted to lose weight, these are the conversations that you have to have because you talk about resentment. It is super easy to be resentful when your husband, who is also trying, you know, theoretically is also trying to lose weight and he gets to eat almost twice what you do and he'll lose it faster. That's, that's a tough that pill makes to me want to cuss <laughs> <laughs> i can do that for you but it is the julie tussie show and i don't want to scare your folks away so it is this is where it's so terribly important to have very candid conversations yeah. with your spouse or your loved ones to say hey listen this weight loss thing is really important to me right now um this is what it's going to take for me to do it These are the foods that I can't have in the house right now because when I see them, I eat all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And and just, you know, have these conversations. Keep it open. You know, when I was helping my wife lose weight, it was one of those things where I knew that if I came home every Friday and said, let's go out to eat, let's go out to eat, that makes her weight loss plan so much harder because it's so much more difficult to, to control these things at restaurants. So it was easier for us to cook at home yeah. where we had more control over what was actually going in our mouths. So I, I wish that, Julia, I could come on here and go, you know what? I have the solution. This weight loss thing is just so easy. It's this one little trick, but it's not a trick. No. It is the really difficult things that you have to do, and you pick any number. If you don't like 1,200, try 13. If you don't <laughs> like 13, try 14. Right. And if it works, you're going to know, but if it doesn't, your only option is to figure out a way to dial it down and you can do more exercise, but most people aren't going to commit that kind of time. Um, They just say they will. And evidently it's kind of, you know, what is it? 20% of weight loss is exercise. And I can understand why now, because the longer you do it, the less it actually burns doing the same amount of work. So, but what I love about this is that we need to, especially as women, I think it's easier for men you know, because they can have so many more calories than a woman. But especially as women, I think that when we're going to do weight loss in our lives, we need to get off of the as fast as possible train and get on the, okay, what works for me? And actually take this approach. I don't think I've ever told you this, but I had hit a plateau on Weight Watchers really bad for like, I don't know, four months. And I talked to Heather, it was a couple years ago, and I talked to Heather Robertson of Half Size Me, and she said, Julie... What I want you to do is I want you to eat at maintenance, which, which thank God, my maintenance, maintenance is 1,700 calories. <laughs> and she said, I want you to eat at maintenance for two weeks. And then when you go off, go back to what I was doing, which was Weight Watchers, then the plan I would be about 1,200 calories a day. Now it's like crazy to figure out. But so I did that. And she said, 
But since I'm going to let you do maintenance calories, why don't you give me something? I'm like, what? She said, I want you to cut sugar out the whole time you're doing it. And after five days, of course, I texted her and said, are you trying to kill me, Heather? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, once I got off that sugar, and I don't know if you listen to my podcast very much, but I actually just re-released my three keys that I have found that help me is increasing protein, which I learned from you and Heather, cutting sugar, and then intermittent fasting helps me. And I think the main reason, other than the leptin and chemistry of it, is because it helps me to stay in that lower calorie window than I want. Mm-hmm. So sure. so when I did that, then as soon as I went off the two weeks, and you know what? I stayed exactly the same weight. Exactly the same weight for two weeks. It was awesome. I would, I would look at my calories and go, oh my gosh, it's 10 o'clock at night and I, I have to eat 250 calories. And it was such punishment to have a banana and some peanut butter before bed. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> but I, um, I'm sorry, excuse me. <coughs> I love Kentucky weather. But what it did for me, Jason, was as soon as I went back to my deficit, I dropped like five pounds that first week. Which, you know, they call the whoosh or whatever. But so I think as women, and I'm sure you see this too, we just feel so bad. We're so emotional about our weight that when we go to do weight loss, we just jump in 100%, clean the entire cabinet, set unrealistic goals, and we think we're going to do it. And we white knuckle it for one, two, maybe three weeks. And then we're off like a train off a track. We're just, it's, we're wiped out. So the process of finding out, maybe finding macros.inc or whatever it is, or macrosinc.com, whatever it is, finding out what you need, calling Jason and having him coach you. You do that, and I love that you do that, and you do, you, like, you've helped me find where I fall. And take the time, you know. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the time and find out. Like, I'm going to push it to the limit because I want to enjoy my life. And I'm going to push it to the limit. And I'm going to try 1,500 calories for a week or two and see what happens. or And then maybe lower it to 14. But find out. Take the time to love you enough to find out what it is that makes your body work. And then work on the letting go of the resentment because... You know, it's like you said, Jace, it's, we're dealt what we're dealt, you know, big, big DNA in my family to be fat. And I always say, if I didn't do everything I do now, I'd probably be really a big girl. So, well, and, and uh, you know, I, I do want to kind of bring up a couple of the points too, to that. And, and that is, you know, let's come back to this magical number of 1200. Let's assume that the, you know, the, the road to paradise is paved at 1200 calories. Um, for a lot of women, I can't say I want you to be at 1,200 calories every day of a calendar month because when you factor in hormonal fluctuations, menstruation Mm -hmm. cycles, all these different things, there are going to be certain periods of the average female's month where they've got no business being in a deficit. I mean none. So you may have to take that seven days or 10 days or whatever it is each month to go, you know what, that's going to be my time of the month that I'm not going to worry about weight loss. I'm going to eat at maintenance for that span of days until my system starts to kind of regulate again. Mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of come back to my deficit, which means that you're on a little bit slower path to weight loss. But I think that Heather probably said it best. If you're the kind of person who has been dieting for 30 years and you take a slow path to 10% of that to get to your ideal weight, What's three years against 30 to get to a, the healthiest version of yourself that you could be at? Exactly. The other reason why, why I want to bring this up, and I've been using this example a lot, and I want to give credit to the person I heard it from. I believe um, his last name is pronounced Cron, Brian Cron. He was a coach out of uh, Canada. And the way that he describes it, it was he, he goes, when you, do, when you look at your diet, when you look at what you do with your diet, the harder, the, the more the pendulum swings to one side, the more it's going to come back on the other side. Yeah. So if you do this super aggressive 500 calorie diet or 700 calorie diet, what do you think that rebound is going to be like? Because right. it's probably not going to be pretty. No. So when you look at the people that are either trying to bottom out the calories or they start removing whole food groups or whatever the case is, right. just think about what the potential is for the rebound if it doesn't work. 
And that hopefully kind of gives you a little bit of a, uh, of a compass for maybe I need to be a little bit more reasonable with myself this go round. Exactly. And, you know, I, I like what you're saying about going up to maintenance in, in the, you know, once a month for five, seven days, whatever your cycle is. Because so many people, Jason, think that once they get to their goal weight, it's going to be rainbows and unicorns and then you can eat normal. And you can't. You've got to learn to eat at maintenance while, and you know, I learned this from Heather too. She's just big on this losing weight with maintenance in mind. And so I thoroughly believe in maintenance breaks. And that's just an awesome way to practice maintenance. Yeah, well, 100%. 100%. <laughs> well, it's yep. been so awesome talking to you. I, um, I just love that. The case for and against the 1,200 calorie diet, and I'm going to put the link to that in my notes if I can get a link from you, Jason, and um, go and read it. It's amazing. Go and find uh, the new book. What's your new book called again, Jason? The new one is called A Revolution a Day, and it's on Amazon in both physical and Kindle versions. I love that. I love that you you are a book writer. I want to be a book writer when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm not don't sure love that I'm writing. Grown up, but I am a book writer. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Don't ever grow up, Jason. It's too fun to not be grown up. But uh, let, let's tell the listeners how they can find you. Maybe there's some ladies out there that need a coach, and I can highly recommend Jason. He's amazing to work with. So, how can they find you? Sure. So the the, the blog, um, if you if you link back to it um, through the show notes, is jasonleenarts.com. And as I mentioned, there's a um, there's there's generally an article each week of me running my mouth and uh the podcast is revolutionary you uh always welcome to take new facebook or instagram friends so people can see the the mischief that we're cooking up over here at the studio and hopefully inspire people with their own their own fitness journeys i love it i love it well thank you for another episode of the bald and the beautiful <laughs> Although if you could see me right now, it would not th- it would not have to be it would have to be the bald and the soccer mom. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much Jason for coming on. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. It really means a lot. Thank you for listening to the Julie Tussie show. Remember you only get one fabulous, amazing, awesome life. I want you to remember to live it to the fullest. After a week of hearing hundreds of I can'ts, I'm here today to tell you, you can. Find us on social media at facebook.com forward slash the Julie Tussie Show and Instagram the Julie Tussie Show, home of the original Suburban Bomb Show. To get your copy of the music you hear in today's program, go to cdbaby.com forward slash cd forward slash Julie Tussie 4. I want to take a minute to say thank you so much to our supporters, underwriters, sponsors, those of you that give to our nonprofit corporation, The Voice Incorporated. If you want to give into this program, you can go to The Voice INC, The Voice INC on Venmo, or you can email me at the Julie Tussie Show at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your kind consideration, and remember, all gifts are tax deductible. Only on the Julie Tussie Show are you going to hear that you are not created to be ordinary but extraordinary. You are not created to be common but uncommon. You are not created to be average but above average. You are not created to be tolerable or passable. No, but you are created to be remarkable, noteworthy, impressive, striking, outstanding, brilliant, excellent, superb, praiseworthy. We could go on and on about how awesome you are. Visit thejulietussieshow.com. Lots of fabulous shopping, beautiful things that you might want to get as a gift or for yourself. You can also reach out to me and communicate with me there. Thejulietussieshow.com. If life is my oyster, darling, pass the hot sauce.
to me